This is the BBC Home Service. To speak in memory of His Holiness, Pope Pius XII, who died early this morning, here is the Archbishop of Westminster, the Most Reverend Dr. William Godfrey. The death of our beloved pontiff, Pope Pius XII, has stricken us all with great sorrow, and our sorrow we know is shared, not only by those who loved and honoured him as their spiritual father, but by many others also who have known him as a great man and a holy servant of God. We have admired his courageous and untiring work for the church, and not for the church only, but for the peace and well-being of the whole world. Indeed he was a good shepherd of his flock. He was perhaps better known than any of his predecessors, firstly because he was so widely travelled, and secondly because he made himself so accessible to those who wished to be received in audience. Thousands of soldiers, sailors and airmen visited Rome during and after the war. To all of these His Holiness gave a warm welcome and expressed his delight at seeing them. Then his appearance on the television screen made him well known to our people in this island. I first came to know him in 1930, when as Cardinal Pacelli, he was Secretary of State to his predecessor, Pope Pius XI. During the 15 years in which I had the honor of being his personal representative in this land, I was in frequent contact with him. In his years as Secretary of State, Cardinal Eugenio Pacelli was a well-known figure in Rome. Tall and slight of build, he moved with quiet dignity on ceremonial occasions. One was always impressed by his recollected demeanour. It told of a calm, peaceful soul, which remained in close union with his God, despite the cares of office and the exacting duties which were his in a period of international unrest and political turmoil. At times he was seen in the pulpit. His eloquence and sincerity were matched with a most serene and a dignified presence. Before he became a cardinal, he had been for many years apostolic nuncio in Germany, and he brought to his exalted task as Secretary of State a wealth of experience and a mind well equipped and well informed. At the moment of his election as Pope, one who was present said that he noticed how pale he looked. His lips moved in prayer as he left his cardinal's throne in the Sistine Chapel to go and put on the white cassock of the Pope before going to bless his people for the first time from the lodger above the entrance to St. Peter's. Soon after his election, he spoke of the flame of fatherhood newly lighted in his heart, words that truly revealed the warmth of his affection for the flock now entrusted to him by God. That flame burned always more brightly as the years went by. To Peter, Christ had said, Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. To the twelfth pious, the same commission was given. How well he did his task. The secret of his strength and of his power was this constant spirit of prayer and union with God, so evident to all who knew him, and that explains so much that we are told of him. I remember once when I was rector of the English College in Rome going with a person on a diplomatic mission who had sought an interview with Cardinal Pacelli. After the interview, the future Pope chatted with both of us and he evidently made a deep impression on the visitor for as we came down the stairway he said to me how refreshing for us diplomats to hear the name of God mentioned so simply and naturally in reference to the international situation. I remember also obtaining an audience for a lady of a royal rank, a deeply Christian woman, but not of the Catholic faith. She and her family had had much suffering, and the Pope was well aware of all that she had undergone. Afterwards, the lady spoke to me of the strong impression she had of the Pope's calm and worldliness, which had uplifted and consoled her. She had noticed it particularly at the moment when His Holiness turned to her and said, Madame, this is not the true life here below. It is a preparation for the life in the world to come. Nor could I forget the words of a British statesman, not of our faith, who said to me after a private audience with Pope Pius, I felt I was in the presence of goodness. This was the impression made by His Holiness on those who came in intimate contact with him. For myself, 
I can only say that he always received me with a fatherly simplicity. He did not hesitate, quite simply and unassumingly, to invite one's opinion, and his face, grave in repose, would light up with a smile as he expressed his gratitude for anything one had done or said. His pontificate has been a most distinguished one, set as it was in a background of world conflict and the international tension of the so-called Cold War. It has not been a Cold War for the Catholic Church, nor indeed for Christians or God-fearing people generally. The burning heat of persecution has afflicted many in those parts of the world where the enemies of religion hold sway. In the midst of all this, Pope Pius pursued his work of charity, helping all, both spiritually and materially, wherever his fatherly hand could reach. The hunted, the missing, the afflicted, the downtrodden, all of whatever creed, even the very persecutors, felt the helping and healing hand of the Holy See. He persevered in his pleadings for peace and the defense of Christian values. Frequently, he urged the nations of Europe and the world to come together in brotherly union in God and in Christ. He saw no other way to a lasting peace. So, in an age in which godless materialism masquerades as social redemption and cruel oppression makes pretense of freedom, he held on his way till the end, pleading, guiding with wise counsel the individuals and groups whom he so readily received in their thousands. He spared no fatigue. He was frugal in his way of life. He was completely detached from the world. He was so much in the world by virtue of his office, yet he was never of it, not yielding lightly to its caprices or slogans. Well, indeed, can we apply to Pope Pius those words of Holy Writ, I told the story of thy just dealings before a great throng. Be witness, Lord, that I do not seal my lips. His words have been quoted widely in the press, in pulpit and on platform, in every land open to the voice of freedom. A noteworthy feature of his speeches in his latter years has been a most refreshing optimism. An instance of this was his address to a large gathering of members of Catholic Action, when the Pope declared his firm conviction that there would be a new springtime in the life of the Church, followed by a glorious summer. Such words as these, uttered while the nations were preoccupied with the thought of the terror of new weapons and missiles, threatening destruction, caused not a little surprise. But they were certainly in harmony with that spirit of Christian cheerfulness of which we are duly reminded in the preface of the Mass. Lift up your hearts. We have them uplifted to the Lord. Now that his voice is stilled in death, and he has laid down his office of vicar of Christ, we may pray for his eternal rest, so that he may speedily enjoy what is so well expressed in the words of his motto, Opus Justitiae Pax, that peace which is the fruit of righteousness. So we bid farewell to a beloved pontiff who adorned the vesture of holiness and whose memory will be blessed by all men of goodwill in every continent of this stricken world. At 11.30 on Saturday morning, a pontifical requiem mass will be sung in Westminster Cathedral. This will be broadcast in the home service and television service of the BBC.